So Saw 6 is the next installment in this retrospective series we are looking at on the route to Saw X. Now I'm going to tell you guys my thoughts on Saw 6. Did I love it as much as I used to? Do I think it's still absolutely fantastic? Or do I absolutely downright hate this movie? We're going to talk about it. Smash your thoughts down in the comment section below. Smash that like button. Click subscribe. And let's talk about Saw 6 right now. Okay, so Saw 6, uh, the sixth installment in the Saw franchise, was a movie when I remember watching it for the first time in that, thinking this was absolutely fantastic. Thinking this is definitely right behind the first Saw as my second favorite film of this franchise. I remember loving the concept behind the game, loving the idea of what was happening with the detectives, with Detective Hoffman and the special agent, the FBI's. I, I remember enjoying it. So coming back and re-watching it, what do I think of it now after re-watching it again? And I'm going to tell you guys straight up, this is still easily my second favorite of the Saw franchise. I think number six is actually really good. I think this is one of the best horror movies. I think it's just, this is the perfect sequel to a Saw movie. This is what every sequel needed to be after the first original Saw. This is just the definition of what I think Saw is. And why I think that is because, look, obviously we get some more backstory about John Kramer in here, about why this game is taking place and what actually happened when he had the tumor, who he went to to try and get this treatment done. And I love the speech he gives the actual insurance person about we all blame the government, we all blame you know, these other people when it's actually the insurance companies who actually get to push the button whether you live or die. And I thought that was all absolutely fantastic writing to incorporate that into it. And incorporating this insurance guy who runs his runs this massive multi-million dollar business in a way where he is trying to find flaws in their applications in order to pull it so that they save money. And he's got a team of six people that do that which I find is absolutely outrageous. And he, what he tries to do is he creates this formula to whether or not you will live a healthy, happy life or whether you won't. And that will determine whether you live or die. And I love when John Kramer comes in and tells him like, you forgot the one most important thing in your algorithm when you're doing this, the will to live. And I thought that it's absolutely incredible. Like this it's just development of John Kramer. This is why I think Jigsaw, as John Kramer, is one of the best horror characters of all time because he has such a complex mind, complex thinking, and the way that he does it, it's just not mindless killing. It's actually strategic. It's all about, you know, changing people's lives. So the game is based around this insurance guy and who is whose name is William, it's all based around William and his algorithm and how he treats other people. And I think that is absolutely fantastic. And the traps throughout here are absolutely incredible. So the first trap we see, which has nothing to do with the William game, is actually a trap with a girl and a guy who actually rip people off because they give them loans. And in order to do that, they do it knowing full well that these people can't repay do the repayment. So they're going to cease more than what these people can actually afford. And so they put in there, they're opposites and they got to give a pound of flesh and whoever gives the most flesh up wins and survives. And they got these nail, these screws going into their, their temples, into their skulls. And it's brutal, man. It is brutal. You have the guy cutting his fat off and it's just all brutal. And then she's like, she, she tries to do it, but she's scrawny. She ain't, she ain't got that type of flesh on her. So she has to give up an arm and she chops an arm off and puts the arm in there. And it's, it's brutal. It is absolutely brutal. So we have that stuff going on. What we also have is the game with William itself. And we see William there with one of his janitors who's in there who smokes, who can't hold lungs. And the first trap is they're holding their, every time they take a breath, these things start to collapse onto their ribs and crush them. And obviously, William survives. He's got 60 minutes to get to where he needs to get to. Otherwise, he won't see his family again. And so you have the guy get crushed, the actual janitor guy get crushed. It's brutal. 
it is. And then you obviously have this wife and kid that have been picked up and that are put in there with acid. And they're thinking, oh my God, is this acid going to like come down and absolutely just like murder me? What's going on? And I love the editing style and the choice that they made to do this because of by saying you're never going to see your family again, you automatically assume that this family is William's family. You think this is the door, uh, the son and the wife. So you're kind of like, okay, because we hear him on the phone saying, I got to stay back from work. So you kind of think, is he cheating? And then you have this reporter who's going after asking Hoffman all these questions about Jigsaw. She then gets captured and put in there. And you're kind of like, okay, so what is her whole thing? We obviously know Hoffman doesn't like her snooping around in this business. What's going on with that? But as the games progress, you start to get right into these games. You have a game where you've got to go through. One of them's down below. She's got a thing a harness strapped to her chest, and it will shoot through her skull. And she's got to go through this maze where it's got like this very, very hot steam coming out. And William, in order to relieve her, has to take push like pull this lever and he takes the steam so she can get through she obviously gets through there but she needs the key and the key's inside him and without them trying to like you know just do it properly and that she starts swinging and that and then he ends up you know she ends up getting killed so there's that one as well that one's absolutely brutal then you have the one where he's got to choose between a healthy young man with no family or an elderly person who has a family and won't live as long as this person. So you have these two dynamics and it's like based on your algorithm, he should be saved, not her. Obviously he saves his secu secretary, who's the older lady. So you have that, she's they're hanging from barbed wire. It's, it's brutal, man. It is absolutely brutal. So you have that. This is all happening in an abandoned zoo, by the way. So you, as he goes through to the next one, this is one of my, probably my favorite traps of the actual whole Saw franchise is as he comes in, he's got his six members who go in and find the flaws to discredit these people so they can't get coverage. And William now must choose, based on his algorithm, two can survive, four have to die. And so they're on like a merry-go-round sort of thingy going on. They're all strapped there and there's a shotgun. So it will spin and it will stop on that person. And then he's got to choose whether or not he's going to shoot him. But he has to put his hand in this cage and he will cop a like a penalty sort of thing in order to save these people. So he now has to choose. And it is, it's absolutely weird. It's on the edge of your seat because you're like, who's he going to save? He's going to save his dude. Is he going to save his like dude friends? Or is he going to save the ladies? What's going to happen? He ultimately saves two girls in here and kills the rest of them. And it is absolutely brutal. And you're still thinking, okay, so he's, now he's got to get to this final part. So, you know, you, he's starting to see the flaws in his actual insurance policy that he created, the algorithm. It's not, like, flawless. It has its flaws. And that's what I love. It's about teaching this guy a lesson. Like, you're the one that's choosing to kill these people without it. And then when we get to the end, he's there. And as it all comes up, you see the kid and the mother there. And then you see the reporter. And William's actually with the reporter. So... Instantly, you're thinking in your mind, I remember the first time I saw this, I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, he's cheating on her with her. And he's just ran to her and now that. But no, it's not. It's actually the family of the guy who came in to see William to get coverage so he could get this surgery to fix his uh, brain tumor. And then it's something to do with like, William's like, no man, you've had oral surgery. So you you lied about it. You're like, it's, I just can't do it. It's policy. It's policy. So you, he basically killed him. And that's what he says. He says, you kill me. And this is where we see in that flashback, that family's there. And then they are really annoyed because you're like, you killed my husband. You killed my father. And it's absolutely fantastic. So now they have the choice to kill William or not. And William's up against the thing and he's on the trigger and the mother can't do it. But the son is just like, no, you killed my father not have enough so he pulls the live or die lever and this tr contraption comes down hits william in the back with all these needles and then the acid actually goes into him and like just absolutely destroys his insides it's absolutely brutal saw six has some brutality in it some gruesome kills some awesome traps but it's the story about the policy and about this insurance broker guy who owns the insurance company william 
who is actually being tested in a way that I really, really love because it's like showing you that you're, you're the executioner here because you're not covering these people because of these little flaws that have nothing to do with it. You just want to save money. So I love all that. Meanwhile, while that's all going on, we find out that actually Peter Strom's partner is still alive and that Ericsson took her and kept it a secret so that no one knew. I've, I, this, is, this is the one issue I have with this movie is why wouldn't you tell Strom? Like, I just don't get it. Like, you just let him think that she's dead and then to put, like, that to me was always one of those things where like, why wouldn't you tell him? But obviously, you know, she obviously knows more about Hoffman because Strom even says her last words were Hoffman. So what, she would tell Erickson what she knew and then why would he not go, okay, we're going to tell Peter Strom, bring him in and would like, it's just those little things like that just didn't make sense to me. But you have all that stuff going on with them trying to figure out what is Hoffman's play in all of this. And obviously we see Hoffman wants to take control of John's work. So he tells Jill, give me those envelopes. She gives him five envelopes. And now he's going to do it. He's like, I work alone. I'm going to do this. It's almost over. So he's running all the stuff. So he goes with Ericsson and that. And they got this new voice thing where they can actually go back to the jigsaw tapes, which they're going back to the very first one that Hoffman did. Then when he wasn't a part with jigsaw, that now they're going to figure out whose voice it is. And as they start to figure out who it is, they realize it's Hoffman. And so Hoffman then kills everyone in there and leaves puts Peter Strom's, because he's got his hand from the previous one, put him in, put his handprints everywhere so they think it's him. So then he goes, and this is where we find out that going back to those ones, that what Hoffman actually really did with Amanda, why did Amanda kill that per, kill the doctor in number three? Why did she do that? And we find out what actually that note said in this movie where Hoffman wrote it about I know what you did. You were with Cecil that night where Jill lost the baby. You were the one telling him to go in and do all that stuff. So I'm going to tell John unless you kill this doctor. And that's when it happens. But I love the thing where Hoffman hasn't been tested. John has not tested Hoffman once so far. And Amanda's always like, when's your test going to come? When's your test going to come? And here it comes because Jill has one more envelope, which is number six that she kept, which is actually Hoffman. And this is where she, when Hoffman's on the chair watching the game, she electrocutes him through the chair and then puts the reverse bear trap on his face, which I absolutely, it's, it's awesome. And this is where he is going to be tested now because she says, John left me one envelope and it was envelope number six, which was you. So then she leaves. Hoffman has now got 45 seconds to get out of this trap and it is brutal because he he gets his hands free by smashing one of his hands so he could get it out. And then as it's about to go, he puts it into the actual bars there and then it opens up and then he rips his rips his head and face out of it as it then expands and explodes. And now he's got like this massive like rip cut right down his face with like skin hanging off. It's, it's disgusting, but it's so cool at the same time. And that's where we end. We end on that note. So Hoffman's now been tested. Six to me, I really enjoyed the story. I really enjoyed the backstory to the characters. This is probably the best that I've liked Hoffman is in this movie. And to see him be tested like that, it's gruesome. It's brutal. It's quick. It's fast. It's fast paced. It's brilliant. I really think this is just a really good horror movie. It really is. It has everything you want in a Saw franchise in a movie that comes from this franchise. To me, I just really love Saw 6. So let me know what you guys think of Saw 6. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Smash it down there. Smash that like button. Click subscribe. And I'll see you guys next video. Until then, stay safe and peace out.